One little calculation you can do is say, well, what if I turn the sun off completely? I stopped all the energy coming out of the core from the fusion reactions, and it gets to this bottom edge of this convection zone. What if I stopped all the energy coming through into the convection zone? Then, a hundred years later, here on Earth, the amount of power we were receiving from the sun would have dropped by something considerably less than half of 1%. All right? And that's a complete switch off of the sun. So it's because the sun is so big. It's so massive, you can't change its outside temperature, and it's its outside temperature that determines how much it emits. There is a whole area of science called space weather, and, and that is to do with how modern technological systems are subject to solar activity. And the effect of a very large solar terrestrial event on modern life could be quite profound. I mean, satellites are at risk, communications are at risk, all sorts of things are at risk. So it is quite valid that we worry about that. Um, it's not so valid to worry about it in terms of the solar influence on global climate because um, Quite frankly, nothing fits. The altitude profile of the warming is all wrong for solar warming. The difference between day and night has not increased as you'd expect if it was solar irradiance induced. The seasonality is all wrong. Okay? In fact, we see more warming in winter, whereas if it was the irradiance increase, you'd get more warming in, in summer. So, so nothing fits.